Hey everyone, I welcome you all to this session by K21 Academy. In this session, we shall learn everything there is to begin with stateful sets in Kubernetes. Now, let's first have a look at the agenda for today's session. We shall begin with learning the basics of stateful sets, followed by the relevance of stateful sets. After that, we shall understand the contrast between deployment and stateful sets. Then, we shall understand what is meant by the term pod identity and finally we shall have a look at some limitations of the stateful set. There are several other things that we shall learn on the way. So without any further ado, let's get started with what is stateful set. For now, let's say stateful set is a component of Kubernetes which is used specifically for stateful applications. Here the question arises what is meant by the term stateful applications. There are two types of applications, stateless applications and stateful applications. So stateful applications are the ones that save client data concerning each client session. And then that data is used next time whenever a client makes a request. This client data may be stored on a local server or a remote server. While in the case of stateless applications, the state of the client session is not stored by the server. Moving forward with stateful set, the next point states that stateful set is the controller that looks after the deploying and scaling of Kubernetes pods. Here, scaling refers to the increment or decrement in the number of replicas. There is nothing to worry about. We will check about the pods and their identity in the forthcoming topic. For now, let's say that the pod is the smallest deployable object in Kubernetes. In Kubernetes, every pod that is created by stateful set has an ordinal value and an assigned stable network identity. This means that all the pods in a stateful set have a sticky unique identity and this identity is based on the unique ordinal number that was assigned to it by the stateful controller. Now, when we know about the basics of stateful set, it is really important to know its relevance and to understand why are we talking about it in the first place. So the next topic is why use stateful set. We have divided the why factor into three main reasons. The first factor is ordered operations. This means that for a stateful set that has n number of replicas, each pod will have a unique ordinal integer that will begin from zero to n minus one. And this is why this feature is also called as ordered operations with ordinal index. The next reason is the persistent volumes. This means even if a pod gets rescheduled to a new node, the same persistent disk can be attached to it. Or we can simply say persistent storage linked to the ordinal index or name stays the same. The third and the last factor on our list is stable network IDs. As the name suggests, it means that the pods will have a stable and unique network ID across all the restarts, even respawning the cluster will not treat the pod as a new member. Now, let's go on further and check what is the difference between stateful sets and deployment. There are three ways to deploy any applications or pods on Kubernetes. The three ways include deployments, stateful sets, and daemon sets. Here, we shall be having a look at the contrast between stateful set and deployment. Beginning with stateful set, stateful set is a Kubernetes resource that enables the management of stateful applications. It manages the deployment and scaling of a set of pods. While deployment is the easiest and the most common way of deploying an application. The second line of difference states that though stateful set is also a controller, it doesn't create a replica set. Instead, it creates pods with a unique way of naming them. While deployments first create replica set, which then creates a pod. To understand this even better, let's say we want to create a deployment with one replica. So first step would be to check if the desired state of replica set is one and the current state is zero. So for that, First, a replica set will be created, followed by a pod. Moving forth, the third point of contrast states that stateful sets don't create a replica set, 
so the stateful set cannot be rolled back to a previous version. The stateful sets can either be deleted or scaled up or down. Whereas manual rolling back is possible in the case of deployment, since deployment creates a replica set which then creates a pod. So whenever a deployment is updated using rolling update strategy, a new replica set is created. Now moving forward, since we are talking about pods and their unique naming conventions, let's have a look at what is pod identity. Pod identity is an original way used by Kubernetes to represent cloud identity and configuration of pods to have associated identities. Here, the most important part is to understand what exactly a pod is. A pod is the smallest, most basic deployable object in Kubernetes. It is like a single instance of a running process in the cluster. These pods contain one or more containers like Docker containers. Whenever a pod runs multiple containers, the containers work as a single identity and share the pod's resources. After understanding what pod and its identity is, let's move on to the final topic of the video, that is the limitations of stateful set. What do you think could be the limitations or disadvantages of stateful set? The first and the most basic point of concern is that Stateful set is not available in Kubernetes in the versions before 1.5. It is present in the versions that come after that. Secondly, stateful sets needs a headless service and the biggest challenge here is that it is to be created by the person working on the sets. Third, in case we delete a stateful set, we must understand that deletion of the stateful set doesn't mean the volume of data will also be deleted. The data remains which can be an issue in terms of data safety. The fourth and the final limitation is that there is no guarantee on termination of pods even after the stateful set is deleted. Although if we want to achieve ordered termination of the pods in the stateful set, we can scale the stateful set down to zero before deletion. And this was all for today's session. Now, if you want to learn more and get certified, then sign up for the free class of Kubernetes certification of your choice. For certified Kubernetes administrator free class, please visit k21academy.com slash Kubernetes02. For certified Kubernetes security specialized free class, please visit k21academy.com slash Kubernetes SEC02. In this 12-week roadmap, we take you from basics to the advanced level along with the tips and resources for clearing the certification exam. We also have a separate team working for CV preparation and on-job support. So if you want to become a Docker and certified Kubernetes administrator and want to learn right from basics to expert level, then we have a comprehensive step-by-step -step training for you. That includes hands-on labs including exam preparation, and the most important part, one year on job support. If you are interested in this program, then I would highly recommend you to attend a free class which covers most of the topics like why learn Docker and Kubernetes, and under Docker, you will be learning what is a container and Docker, Docker architecture, and you will be learning what is Kubernetes, why to use Kubernetes architecture and ports, highly available and scalable applications and many other topics. So if you are interested in attending this free class, you can visit k21academy.com slash Kubernetes02. You can also find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from K21 Academy.